if you look the part, act the part. So this is what my friend's wife told me the other day. And just to be clear, she didn't say it to me because I was doing anything wrong. She said it because her and her husband have been going out to these like nice business dinners and these corporate functions recently. And she's been seeing all of these men acting like complete savages at these nice dinner events. And she indicated to me that I should talk about it in a video. So here you go, Wendy, this one's for you. And it makes a lot of sense, right? If you really think about it, because you can easily change your style, wear nice clothes and look really great. But if you've never had to really pay that much attention to your table manners in the past, it could be confusing for other people, right? Because honestly, table manners are a pretty solid indication of your upbringing, your values, your awareness, and your respect for other people. And look, you don't have to act like royalty every time you're out to dinner, but knowing a few basic rules can really help you out in a lot of ways that you might not even realize. So let's get started. All right, so let's get started with your place setting and the silverware situation. The fancier the venue or the event, the more plates and silverware and glassware that you're gonna have to deal with. But let me simplify that for you. The easiest way to think about silverware is to start at the outside and work your way in. And if the person setting the table knows what they're doing, it should look something like this. Now, the smaller fork on the outside is for your salad or your first course. The spoon is gonna usually be for soup. And the small spoon or fork at the top of your plate, that's for dessert, so don't worry about that right now. And if you have a bread plate, it's gonna be at your upper left. And all of your glassware is going to be at your upper right. One more thing, when you're eating and then you're done cutting something and you want to put your knife down, place it at the top of your plate. Okay, when you first sit down, and this goes for pretty much anywhere that you might be, the napkin goes on your lap. This should basically happen within the first 30 seconds of you sitting down at any restaurant for any meal. Leaving the napkin on the table while you're eating and getting it all nasty looking is a faux pas. But I mean, sure, man, if you're out at a sports bar eating chicken wings or something, do your thing. But if you're anywhere else, where utensils are involved, the napkin goes on your lap right away. And if at any point you need to get up and excuse yourself from the table, just fold the napkin over on itself and place it next to your plate or on your chair. You don't have to make it all perfectly folded, just kind of fold it over on itself and set it down. Okay, the next thing you should do immediately when sitting down is to silence your phone and put it away. Using your phone, while you're at the dinner table with other people is rude and disrespectful. But look, I understand that casual dining and casual culture has made this kind of a normal occurrence. Just keep in mind, the nicer the dinner, the more you really need to manage your phone activity. I mean, I feel like we've probably all been there, right? We're sitting at dinner talking with someone and then they grab their phone and start looking at it. But then they say they're still listening to you, even if they're staring at their phone, but they're obviously not paying attention to you because they completely missed what you just said because the phone was more important. It makes the other person feel completely worthless. Don't be that guy. Okay, let's talk for a second about your wine glass or your champagne glass. If your wine glass has a stem, always hold it from the stem. And if you wanna be super fancy, always try to drink from the same spot on the rim. In the wine world, this is technically correct. But for the rest of us, it just really helps to keep your wine glass as clean as possible without getting smudgy fingerprints all over it. All right, now let's talk about some of your activities while you're actually eating. First, keep your elbows off the table. Now, it's okay in between courses or once dinner is over, but during dinner, while you're eating, keep your elbows off the table. My mother used to reach across the table and poke my elbows with a fork every time I did this as a kid, and I'll never forget it. So try to keep that in mind. Also, try to pace yourself while you're eating, because generally you'll be involved in conversation with other people, and you don't want your mouth always stuffed full of food when you're trying to speak with someone. Slow down and think about taking smaller bites that you can deal with and get down a lot quicker. You also don't want to look like a savage shoveling food in your mouth every two seconds. Let's talk about your bread plate and using butter. Now, generally, there's going to be a butter knife that's passed with the butter, or there's going to be one just for you on your bread plate. So use that knife. Don't use your steak knife that you've been using and eating with. And when you take a piece of bread, put it on your bread plate. And when you cut yourself a pad of butter, put the butter on your plate. 
Don't sit there with a community butter knife and then smear butter all over your bread and then put the knife back on the plate. Just put some butter on your plate and then you can handle it later. Now, when buttering your bread, there's basically two different ways that you can do this. Most people will butter the entire piece of bread before eating it. And that's fine in America, but in other parts of the world, you break off a piece of bread, then butter it, and then eat it one bite at a time. This is where the term breaking bread comes from. And also, if you're at a table where food is being passed around, always pass from your left to your right. And if somebody asks you to pass the salt, you always pass the salt and pepper both. Now this next one has to do with more of like a cocktail hour situation where there's gonna be some light snacks provided. Now this has always been a thing, but it's even more of a thing now because of disease control. Say there's a big charcuterie board and you wanna grab yourself a few slices of some meat and some cheese and some crackers, don't use your fingers. Use either toothpicks that might be provided or a small pair of tongs. Same thing with a bowl of mixed nuts. Don't scoop out a handful of nuts and then eat from your hands and then go back with the same hand to grab some more. There should be a spoon or something provided so you can scoop out what you want and then put that on your plate. And another thing, double dipping should go without saying, but I know you want that delicious ranch flavor in your mouth with every single bite. So spoon out some dip onto your plate and then you can double dip from there all you want. Now, sometimes things can get a little tricky as you get close to being finished with your meal because there's probably gonna be a lot of little small pieces of food left on your plate that you wanna eat. What you should not do is use your fingers as a backstop to get it onto your fork. Do this instead. Use either a piece of bread or your knife as the backstop. And when you're finished with your meal completely, set your fork and your knife on your plate so they point at like 10 o'clock and four o'clock. This is an indication to your server that you're finished. And one last thing that you should never do is correct somebody else's table manners at the table. Unless it's your kid or something, or maybe your own spouse, try not to correct somebody else's etiquette because it can kind of make you look like a snob and it could potentially be very embarrassing for them. Instead, just send them this video. And if you enjoyed this one, please leave a comment with the word legend to let me know. And if you're new here, please consider subscribing because I release two brand new videos every single week. And with that, my friends, as always, thank you so much for watching. Live well, and I'll see you in the next one.